Why? Why is this happening? Yeah, yeah. To our brothers. Damn. Yeah. Listen. I want to know how the hell you're even living. I generally consider myself a positive person. I'm like resourceful, but some stuff happened around the property and like, well, I know I'll never truly be homeless. Like I, I have family to live with and you know, like I have options. Like I'm luckier than a lot of other people, but. He looks into the mirror, he can see How the hell is anyone existing? He looks into a mirror. He can see the angel and the green man. What he can be is binded, he's chained, and he's cut by the industry. By the industry. Silently crying. Oh, help. Oh, help. Somebody is anybody help. hear me? Won't you please help me? Help me. I feel trapped and like like I just got a good job I start in September but even with that job it pays less than 40 grand a year and it's a job that requires like education and even on that job like I still can't do shit I can't buy anything I can't afford the rent these days like cry hey, hey. somebody anybody hey. won't you please Please help me, I'm trying. Won't you please help me? I'm, I'm just, I'm, I'm just feeling so much despair. And I know I'm normally like really, really positive, but I'm just like, how is everyone else? And are you okay? Because the answer is probably no. And I know I'm lucky. I don't, I don't have kids. I have like good family that will support me. But I just, I feel like I can't stay here. But I can't move anywhere else because anywhere else I move to, I'm gonna be charging like I'm. The landlords are just gonna charge me like twenty five hundred dollars a month in rent. Like unless I move into the middle of literally nowhere where there are zero jobs and. I'm just, I'm just feeling really overwhelmed. Just can't do it, I'm a dog. He looks into a mirror. He can't see the angel and the brain. Oh, he can't see the angel and the brain. Oh, he can't see the angel and the brain. Oh, he can't see the angel and the brain. Oh, he can't see the angel and the brain. Oh, he can't see the angel and the brain. Oh, he can't see the angel and the brain. Oh, he can't see the angel and the brain. Oh, he can't see the angel and the brain. Oh, he can't see the angel and the brain. Oh, he can't see the angel and the brain. Vault opening. Welcome to the vault. <laughs> Guys, everyone around the world is drowning. People have nothing to do, nothing to say, really. Everything has been done, everything has been said. And people, like the lifestyle bloggers and stuff, oh, Miss XO and so on and so forth, I'm okay, yeah, I'm Multiple of them have been coming out. I think maybe you've noticed this trend. Have been coming out and saying that they want to leave YouTube. It's not fun anymore. Miss XO, don't you dare come and blame um, interim bloggers or gossips. Because you, you feel like the situation is not fun anymore. The situation is not fun anymore because of the situation that the whole world is in. If anything, you better thank those gossips and those entertainment and commentary channels. For making you relevant, how ungrateful you are. 
Yes, you can do all bad by yourself, but with us talking about you, you, you are more relevant. Type of situation, and why, why, why you want to cry about it? And you're so upset because everybody, it's not funny anymore. You make one mistake, then everybody's gonna. I told you guys, the lives. I mean, it's called a live. Lives. You know, the people that run this world, they literally know how to control people so well. Sometimes I sit back and I think, oh, these people are actually really brilliant. Or is it that people are so stupid? They call it live a life for a reason. It's people's lives. And if you watch these lives, which is why Miss Exo was saying you can't make a mistake, it's because everybody's repeating the same pattern over and over again. You repeat what you see. It's in your subconscious mind. You get drunk, you go in the live, you make a fool of yourself, you regret it the next morning. Somebody asked me to do lives, even the membership situation. I'm not ready yet for that. And I don't know if I'm ever going to be doing lives. I have to do it different than what everybody else is doing. Because I can see how it's detrimental to your life. These lives. It's people's lives. But it's one life being repeated over and over again, basically. It's the dumbest shit. If you actually sit and think about it, that you will ever witness in your life, lives, right? So everybody is drowning. The world is going to shit. It really, really is. It's gone to shit already. It's really gone to shit. You know what I find really strange is how people will gift people on the internet, ne? When they do the lives. Um, some people will spend about 300 rand a day, every day, to gift people on lives, to see them creating drama and so on and so forth. And yet those people don't even give a damn about you once they get off that live. Why don't you create your own live and also make that money? It's kind of weird to me, eh? And then also the behavior on the lives is so strange. It is so strange. It's lives. It's programming. Because it all looks the same. After I got that comment, I've tried to go live before. And I don't think it was the greatest thing ever. Trust and believe. I was researching these lives. And it's repetition after repetition. Because everybody's being programmed. It's so crazy. And yet, people are spending so much money a day to give these people... But they are drowning. Everybody is drowning. How many videos have you seen lately? YouTube, TikTok, everywhere on all social media. Where people are like, I can't. I'm not coping anymore. I'm just not coping, period. People are making too much money to be poor. And too little money to be um, um, what's this, middle class or rich. Not even middle class, rich. There's no in between at this point. My earring just fell off. And I'm not putting it back in. There's no in between at this point. Nobody's okay, you know. I even saw one of the one of the popular YouTube, um, what's this TikTokers, Nadia, saying that <laughs> nobody's coping. She's not coping. You know, you have this vision and this dream. Please close the door. You have this vision and this dream, right? When it comes to creators, but just in general, actually, where you feel like you're gonna reach a certain point in life. And once, once you reach that point or you reach your goals, you're going to be satisfied, you're going to be happy, you're going to be fulfilled. It's a facade. Because once you reach that point, most people have come out to say that I feel nothing. It's not this big burst of energy that I thought it was going to be. If anything, it is now time to do more. And that more, Nakon, is not fulfilling. Because now you have to do more. It's tiring. I promised myself that if creating videos or editing videos ever feels like a 9 to 5, it ever feels like it's too much, it's a job job now, it's not fun anymore, I'm not going to do it anymore. There has to be some other way I can express my creativity because, wow. Guys, 
you you see i don't put out sometimes i do put out multiple videos a day i have to clear my space Mara, it's not in my mind Uti. i have to do it because i see other creators doing it because i know how tiring it is and if your passion becomes tiring then it's like a nine to five it becomes boring it's not fun anymore I would rather be late on a story than not put some creativity or some fun into my videos. Edit my videos. Have fun with my videos. If I have to do it now because, oh my gosh, numbers, views equal money. I have to be the first one or something like that. Then it's a problem because you're going to get anxiety. Ask the bloggers, ask the YouTubers, ask the creators how much anxiety they get when they don't post. And I've promised myself that I'm not going to do that to myself anymore. I'm going to post when I can post, when I feel like posting. If I have nothing to say, I have nothing to say. If people leave, they leave. If they come, they come. But at no point is this situation going to feel like I'm in a trap. Or it's going to give me the kind of anxiety that, oh my gosh, I'm going to die. I'm not going to die. I'm going to die, but I'm not going to die because of that. No, it's not fun anymore. Let it go. Switch it up. Hang on, do something about it. Why are so many creators wanting to leave all these platforms? Don't blame it on the bloggers. Because they make you relevant. They keep you in that circle. On people's minds and lips and eyes. Shut the hell up and be thankful, Miss X Ho. I mean, Miss. Why does that always happen? I say Miss X Ho all the time. I mean, Miss X Ho. I don't mean any disrespect to you, my lady. It is what it is. You like to complain. Ungrateful human being. <laughs> you really are an ungrateful bitch, not Miss X Ho, obviously. <laughs> If at this point you can't just say thank you for keeping me relevant, you guys. Isn't must get that type of situation. Victim, victim, my foot. Shut the hell up. It's not that serious. You want to trend anyway. It helps your numbers to grow. Whether it's negative or positive. And we all know this. We all know this. Every day, I'm a victim of the bloggers and the gossips. Come on, man. Everybody is drowning. Everybody is drowning. Nobody can really do anything. And the system has keep, kept us in this circle, in this loop, in this prison for a reason, to control us. Even the people on social media. I told you, there's something weird about people on social media. What we do here is not really that normal. It's really not that normal. You have to be a, a different kind of breed to do what it is that we do. You understand what I mean? You have to be a really different breed. People can't afford anything. People can't even afford to eat. You have to choose between, am I going to pay my rent or am I going to feed my family this month? Which one of the bills am I going to skip? Doesn't mean that you are irresponsible. It's just that... What you are earning and your expenses, they don't match. People are actually working to have transport money. But they can't do anything else. And that's when they are breadwinners. Nobody's coping. Everybody's drowning. Everybody is drowning. And then you find people like myself who are not um, wealthy, right? I live a very comfortable life. And I thank God for all of my blessings. Right? But I know for a fact, a little extra here and there would be so much fun. It would be so great. And I'm so grateful for what I have. Because I have faith in God. I have faith in God. That I'm not going to go to bed. My kids won't go to bed hungry without a roof over the head. You must believe in the one that is, was, and always will be. You, otherwise, you won't survive this life. 
God always provides. He really does. But people are drowning and complaining. A lot. A lot. It's sad. I've seen so many heartbreaking videos. The other day I saw another lady. I was sitting with Vanda and we were watching this TikTok. We were kind of laughing, even though it was a sad video. But it was like, <laughs> this is the reality of life. I'm having a day. Or I'm having a life. I don't know, man. I just don't know what to do anymore. I'm sitting outside work, crying my eyes out in my vehicle. Because I can't function anymore. Financially, I just, I don't understand anymore. I don't understand how I make $34 an hour and I can't function. I can't function. I can't pay my bills. I, um, I can't even literally keep gas in my car to get to work three days a week because I can't afford it. Like, I get paid, and it goes to car, mortgage, a couple little bills. And then maybe $80 in food for the week. And I literally only buy groceries on my daughter's home now. On the weeks that she goes with her dad, which is Monday to Monday, what I've started doing is... I buy a loaf of rye bread and I work really hard to keep that one loaf of rye bread lasting me the whole week and I eat peanut butter so I'll eat peanut butter toast whenever I'm hungry and it's been fine it's been working just fine that's told I'm good with that that's fine um but last week I guess I was a little extra hungry a couple days so I had toast in the morning and toast in the evening which that's not in my budget so I ran out of bread on like the Thursday or even the Friday, I don't know. Either way, at 47, I had to see if my mother could buy me a loaf of bread so that I could eat for the weekend before my daughter got home. Because if there's any food in the house, I'm not fucking eating one bit of it. I'm saving everything I can for her. Because then she gets home and she's not surviving a fucking toast. I don't give a shit. I don't give a shit. I don't understand why things are so hard right now. I apparently make too much money to receive any financial benefits or help of any kind. I don't get GST. I don't get like the grocery benefit for single parents, even though I'm a single parent, but I apparently make too much money. I can't reach out to certain resources or any resources because I make too much money. Um... You're going to die when I tell you what I pay for a mortgage right now. $400 every two weeks. And I'm dying. I have to renew my mortgage for February. And I already know that my mortgage will be less, but my payments are going to be probably $400 more a month. I don't know how to budget that in. I don't know what to do. I'm trying to sell stuff on Marketplace. I'm trying to find stuff for a yard sale. You know, I just, I feel like I take one step forward and eight steps back. Like, I get pushed back eight steps. Not that I take one step back. I'm just being forced to go back. My crawl space in my house right now literally has like eight inches of water in it. And it has for months. And it's like filled with mold. And so all I've been doing for the last few days is going online trying to figure out how I could get a septic pump. And then if I can actually sell enough stuff to afford one, then I have to learn how to install it. What? I literally have to. Back in the day, our parents could buy houses or parents could buy houses and cars. Now, 
to buy a house or a car. Yeah, it, it's, yo, it's so hard. It is so hard. It is so hard. It is so hard. And nobody's okay. And it's gonna keep getting harder and harder and harder. What I'm saying is be grateful for what you have. If you have, you have food, you have clothes, you have a roof, baby. Be grateful for that. Because it can be taken away like this. Ask the people that it has been taken away from. Or that know the struggle, struggle, the real struggle. Some people have been um, middle upper class for years. They are only really starting to feel the pinch now. Some of us felt the pinch before. So we know what the struggle is. So if in future or now it was to happen that we struggle, it's like we know how to get by. We know how to survive this shit. We know how to thug it out. That was situation. You need to learn how to thug it out because times are getting deeper. People are drowning. People are really drowning, eh? And it's so sad to watch. It's so sad to watch people that have had so much for so long. Now that it is slipping through their hands because of the systems of this world. Struggle. It's hard. It's hard to watch. But damn, do I not feel blessed for struggling before. God never makes a mistake. He prepares you for what is to come. If my family and I was to fall and fall hard on really, really, and you know what I mean, really, really tough times, I know that I would be able to carry them and teach them how to struggle. That everything is going to be okay. It always is. Through the grace of God. Through the grace of God. Because what else? What else? What else? Look at all these confession stories that you see online of people that tolerate or go to the dark side because they're so desperate and so thirsty for money and comfort. It's not going to do anything for you. Look at the very elite, the, the richest of the rich, the 1% right now, they, most of them, they're already underground in their bunkers. Preparing. You know what those people, they know the Bible so much back and front, more than some of you. More than some of you. And I always tell you guys, repent. You, you, you don't have a choice. They built those bunkers because they're not prepared to repent. They, they would rather hide, like in the day of Noah. But look what happened then. Look what happened then to the Nephilim, or the giants rather. They became, they became petrified. The mountains that you see, when they look like faces or animals that were that big, it's because it really happened. It really fucking happened. But I say this and people will call me crazy. But it's like, it's right there. It's right there for you to see. Nothing is new under the sun. I guess it's, um, that's the beauty of it, but also a curse of this life. Because God has created these laws of life and rules of life, and he does not default from them himself so you have to abide by them type of situation in order for you to survive and have salvation call me crazy if you want but history doesn't lie however there are people that have lied about the actual history but if you dig a little bit deeper you ask God, or damn, baby, just open your Bible. It's all there. The whole story is there. And it's repetitive type of situation. Right? God's word, the Bible, is alive. It's, a, it's like a living thing with a heartbeat. 
It's real. And even if things have been omitted or removed from the Bible, as time has gone on, when you draw closer to God and you start to have that relationship with him, you can decipher the bullshit in the Bible from the truth. And those that have changed it will be damned. But God will give you the discernment and the understanding of what his word is. It is alive. You will feel alive reading the Bible. You will feel alive singing and praising God. You will feel alive drawing nearer to God. It's not a lie. I'm telling you this as a fact because I know. I know what I'm talking about type of situation open your eyes so once again as in the previous video I'd like to apologize to everybody that is suffering and going through a lot we are all suffering and going through a lot in one way or another it is how you decide to play this game in this matrix do you decide or choose to have faith in our creator. You cannot be here if there was no creator. There cannot be science if you believe in science alone. There cannot be science if there was no creator to create the science or the scientists. Open your eyes. Why are they under the why do they have the bunkers? Some of them are already in the bunkers. What will they be hiding from? It is like the days of Noah. They have to hide. And what's going to happen to you? I promise you this. It's not going to hurt you. Just to read that Bible. It's not going to hurt. I don't understand why people are making such a big deal to read the Bible. It's a big deal because the word will rejuvenate and resuscitate you. But you make it seem like it's a mission to do it. It's not that hard. If you can order an Uber or drive out to the bottle store and go get some drinks, just not believe you can take some time out to read the Bible or to pray or to worship. Because God is omnipresent. He's everywhere all the time. He will hear you. Repent for your sins. It's happening now type of situation all right anyway guys if you haven't already please do like share and subscribe to this channel baby baby i'll see you in the next one. Bye.